I've looked at what's been most popular in the tutorials we've done so far and number seven, adding extra creases to pop-up shapes is by far the most popular. So this is a sequel to that, it's adding creases part two, this is using counterfolds. Counterfolds were covered in the introduction but just very briefly and so I'll just recap some of that and then show you how you can use those to enhance your pop-up spreads. There are three basic types. Take the piece of card, fold it in half, and then make a single cut. So with one cut and one crease, fold it like this, fold it back on itself, open it up, and push it forward. So this is the most simple, basic pop-up. The most simple counterfold. So there's one. You can do the same below the cut. If you want, you could change the angle that you're coming in at, and so then you get a different shaped 3D piece. So open that up. So you can see by changing the angle that you've creased it at, you can get, get two different shapes. You can also just add it to the top. You don't necessarily need the cut. You can work from the edge. So say at the top here, fold it in half, add in another fold, so it's like this. Fold it back on itself, open it up and pop that forward. So there we've got the different options. This is all based on V-folds. The second kind uses two cuts and one crease. So we'll make two cuts about the same length. You don't even need to cut them, they can be torn. They don't even need to be parallel. They can be at any angle, it'll still work. In this case, you fold it like this. Fold it back on itself, and when you pop that one forward, you, you've got a type of step. So that's the second time. This is about parallel creases. The third kind is one shortcut and one long one. So this is actually the, it's the converging crease mechanism, but it's a variation. So again, you fold it from the the ends of the cuts, the fold goes from end of cut to end of cut. Fold it back on itself. Open it up. Pop it forward. So this is giving you an angled, two more angled planes to build with. These shapes, they create creases, valley folds, and they create mountain folds. And any of those can be worked on. So if you take this one, you could actually make an extra cut into it and you can fold that and then as you open that up you find you've got the main counterfold and then you've got another small one added to it. You can do this with any of them. So say we take this, this step one here, you can add a cut to the main step, give it a couple of creases so you've got a small extra step added in there like that you can also work into one of these edges we could try that with a short short cut and a longer one so when you bend that you see how you can play with it these are just examples, but any of these techniques can be applied to other pop-up shapes, other mechanisms. Any mountain fold or valley fold, you can cut these into them. And then these, any of these planes, they can be used. You can stick pieces onto them to make pieces stand up, stick out, do what, do what you want. So I've just got a few examples I'll show you in books here. This is Little Red Riding Hood with Paper Engineering by Bruce Foster. And so the examples I've got are quite small, but this is a V-fold. This is the counterfold that's been built into it here. And that counterfold, one of the planes of it, is being used to lift up this extra piece. Down here as well, it's again, it's rather small. We've got a, a V-fold with a counterfold built into it, and that's been used to lift up this plane. This is Cookie Count by Robert Sabuda. And in this example, here we've got, this is a, a parallel fold. Here's the counterfold built into it here. 
and then this is sticking out, raising an image. So the image is built onto the main mechanism. And the last one I want to show you is uh, Pop-Up Frankenstein Paper Engineering by David Hawcock. And on this one, here, the tab that is holding the whole mechanism to the page, rather than going backwards out of sight, it's coming forward. And so this is the counterfold cut into it here, raising this image. If you look at it from behind, you can see this is the counterfold has been cut into this. There's a cut there, and that piece has been pushed forward. And it looks as though there's actually a second one here. So looking at it like this, you can see there's a counterfold there raising this image. There's another one there raising this image. So that's quite a nice thing. So I've done it again on, on this side as well. So there's three of those. So I'll just show you quickly how to do it on a on a V-fold. So if we take a base sheet nicely creased and take a piece of card. So this is a basic V-fold and acute angle V-fold I'm making. I'll make the, the tabs quite big so that we can make counterfolds in those. So we crease it up like this. The crucial thing with these V-folds is that you, you cut away up to the point where all the creases meet. So here it is. It's going to stick down. I'll just reinforce these. It's, it's going to stick onto your page like this. But in this case, I'm going to keep the tabs coming forward so that we can build counterfolds into them. So the whole piece is going to stick onto your page like that. I've just reinforced these creases so the whole thing moves nice and sweetly. And then before you glue it down, you need to work out what, what counterfolds you want built into it. So let's have a step type here, or an angled step. I've made the cuts two different lengths, so we're going to have an angled step on that side fold it back on itself and then on, on this side we'll just have a regular step so we make two cuts both the same length so when this is all opened up this is going to be working like this and we, we've also got this mountain fold in the middle so we make a couple of cuts in that one. One cut will probably be fine. We'll fold it down. So that will go in like that. And let's just add one more on the top, just an extra little fold in there. So generate a couple more planes that we can, we can build on. So here it is, ready to go. Now with all these V-fold mechanisms, you can play around with how how close to the spine you stick them, what sort of shape you want, whether you want it really tight or whether you want it further out so it lies down more and more. I'll probably go with sticking it down at roughly 45 degrees to the spine. Put the glue on one side. Push the glue right up to the creases. It doesn't really matter about the edges of the flaps makes it neater if you do and then this central crease has to be aligned with the the spine so there it is and then you fold the whole piece shut put glue on the other tab close the base so it finds its natural sticking position press it down well so there's your V-fold with a whole series of counterfolds added to it. Now you can start building with these. You can use them any way you like really. So say this, you can come up or you can come forward. We can, or you can do both. So just make one of these going this way and one of them standing up. Every time you add a piece to a construction, always close it down and make sure that it's going to work, that it's going to fit in, that pieces aren't jamming together or snagging with the spine. 
these angled ones here. We could take a piece like this, fold it. Could fold it in the middle or could fold it at one end to make it all a bit more asymmetric. You can stick a piece on onto there like that. There we go. And this one. And I'll cut it to a bit more of a pointy angle so it'll fit in a bit better into the shape we've got. I think that should be good. There we go. Fold it down. So hopefully that shows you how you can use counterfolds with your other pop-up shapes and use them to add extra planes which you can then build on to make more exciting pop-ups. There's one other kind I'd like to show you which is actually a, a more of an asymmetric. All these ones that we looked at before were symmetric. The asymmetric type, you can't crease the piece you're building beforehand, you have to think a bit ahead. So if we take a piece like this, you need to draw a guideline where your spine fold is going to be. So let's just say this is where the spine fold is going to be. And then say this is where the bottom of your pop-up is going to be. So this is going to be a crease and this is going to be a crease and then we can come up as high as we like and we'll put another crease just here so there's going to be a crease there now this is the main spine fold and the distance we come down from it is the width of a ruler so I'm going to use the same thing here this is the important thing that the this distance we'll call it A, is the same as this distance, we'll call that A. So these two are the cut lines, the, up here and up here. And the, the scored lines must never cross cut lines and the cut lines must never cross scored lines. So this is the spine fold, so the score goes from that cut line to the edge. And this is the bottom of the whole construction. So again, it goes from cut line to cut line. This is going to be the leading edge jutting out. So again, you go from cut line to cut line and the top one. So now this is going to fold there. This whole thing is going to come forward. This is going to be a mountain fold, a valley fold and the bottom is a valley fold. So this is your, your parallelogram. If you want to see it more cleanly, we could actually push it through to come out the other side. So there, you can use it that way round. You can use it that way round. And again, you can add more counterfolds to these. If we make a little cut in that, fold it down. So there's the parallelogram and there's the, there's the added step. To find out more about these, you can look at my book, Pop-Up Design and Paper Mechanics, and this goes into counterfolds in much more depth.